So the Google I.O. event was this week and there was a lot of new stuff announced. We had a fun little live stream where we watched it together, but this video is going to be a quick recap of everything that happened. I know a lot of you are Flutter people, so if that's the only thing you're interested in here, go to the timestamp right here, hopefully. <laughs> and then there will also be a chapter labeled Flutter, so you can skip to that as well. So let's get into it. So Google I.O. had two keynotes. First had the main one, which is like the, the main Google I.O. keynote where they announced like new software and stuff like that and then there's a developer keynote so during the main keynote one of the biggest things announced was android 12 and the new look that it brought they try to highlight three big points that it's going to be more personalizable more secure and a better ecosystem of the devices so the biggest thing with the personalization was the material U. so it's a new iteration of material design where they're going to be bringing it into all the apps in google and personalizing it giving you your own personal color palette and have your phone basically look different depending on what colors you enjoy. You could even set a background and it'll take the colors from the background and implement them throughout your apps and your navigation bar and everything. And just overall, the design is a little bit more fresher, looks a lot more like Apple's design, which in my opinion is a good thing. And then throughout the whole keynote, they had a big focus on privacy and they said there was a lot of privacy improvements with Android 12. They went as far as saying that the most secure devices run on Android, which I don't know, but... <laughs> Then they announced that Android Auto will have a digital key where you'll be able to unlock your car with just your phone, similar to what Apple released a little bit ago. Then their cameras are going to have even, even better AI technology than they already do and be able to detect skin tones and hair better. And then they also mentioned that there's now 3 billion devices that run on Android in the world, which is kind of crazy. So next we have Wear OS. The big news here is that they merged together with Samsung and are now working together on wearables, which is, I think, which is great news because Apple kind of runs the whole smartwatch world. So maybe with the Samsung partnership, they'll be able to make even better stuff. So with that comes better performance, better battery. And then they also have a huge health priority with, since they acquired Fitbit. So they're going to try to implement a lot of health related stuff in their watches as well. Then we have Smart Canvas. Smart Canvas is supposed to enhance your Google Workspace experience and link the apps together more. So Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, they're all more linked together and basically just creates a better ecosystem to work with. You can even have video calls inside your Google Docs while you're working together with the team on it. Then they announced Lambda, which is a more natural sounding voice assistant. You can have more real conversations and it's more human-like conversations with the Google Assistant. Then there was a ton of Google Maps updates. They have a live AR view where you could just hold out your map and it'll show you where to go in like real life. Then they have more detailed maps where they include stuff like sidewalks, crosswalks, all those things. They said that they added over 100 new AI things to the maps. Some other examples are it'll show you different restaurants and stuff like that based on what time it is. And then also another tool called Area Busyness where it'll tell you how busy a specific area in the town is which I think is really cool. Then they announced a new health tool with the camera where you could take pictures of your skin conditions and Google should be able to analyze and tell you what it is. Then we got the TPU V4 pod, which is pretty much just an even more advanced cloud computing server thing. So your cloud functions and all that stuff should run even faster. Then there was the Quantum AI Campus, which is a whole campus dedicated to quantum computing and they showed a bunch of cool stuff that they're experimenting with in there. Then there was my favorite part, which is the MUM, which is a multitask unified model, which has a pretty funny name, but it's actually something pretty interesting. They improved the Google search a ton. You'll be able to search for stuff in a more human-like fashion. Like, you, you know how now you go into Google, you have to make things Googleable or phrase your senses in a way that makes Google easy to understand? Well, MUM apparently should make it easier to just write out whatever you want and it'll give you the right results. A really cool example they gave is you'll be able to take a picture of your boots, send it to Google and ask, are these boots good for hiking Mount Fuji? And it should give you an answer like yes or no, or some boot recommendations, stuff like that. Then they went deep into sh the shopping graph. Using the Google Lens, you'll be able to take pictures of something and it'll show you options to buy that specific thing or things similar to it. There'll be some shopping products in YouTube now. You'll be able to analyze that this, this is a thing that you can buy. And then there's a lot of customization you can have within the search. So stuff like price drop notifications on specific items and things like that. And even being able to see all your online shopping carts within Google. Then one of the big things that they focused the whole keynote on, but I didn't have a specific bullet point for, is that they focused a lot of security and privacy stuff. It seems like they're trying to move in a direction similar to Apple where privacy and security is really important. And hopefully all that is true. But with that comes another thing called their password manager. Well, they had a lot of updates with that. It will make managing your passwords easier with little things like 
being able to update your password in Google Assistant if you forgot it or if there's been a breach or something like that. Google Photos had a bunch of new updates. You can make stuff like animated GIFs from your photos, have locked folders, rediscover memories, so they'll find connections or patterns, like pattern-based moments. Well, they'll find patterns within your photos and show them to you, help you rediscover them. You can delete memories, so if you see a person in your photos that you don't like anymore, you can delete all your photos with that person and lots of cool stuff going on there. Then they had some AR things where you can watch your star athletes perform stuff in front of you using AR. Then there was Project Starline, which created a very realistic video call where it was kind of hard to tell that this wasn't the real person, at least from the videos that they showed. And they used like 3D rendering and eye tracking so that their height changes and all that stuff to make it look really realistic. And lastly, there was some really cool updates about the headquarters and the business overall. They're gonna add this dragon scale solar panels over the whole campus and geothermal pile system as well. And this is part of their whole initiative to be completely carbon free by 2030. So a lot of companies are trying to be carbon neutral but Google is trying to be carbon free, which is they don't use carbon at all for any of their technology in the first place. Okay, so now more into the actual developer keynote. So my notes are on this aren't as great as the last one because honestly, it's just some of the stuff I don't understand since I don't work with it, but I'm gonna do a quick recap on that and then go a little bit more in depth on the Flutter part. So for Android 12, we got more APIs for developers. It seems like you'll have more access to stuff that you can do with the device. Of course, better performance, and then the new UI components that you get. They kind of had two objectives for it. First, make be creating beautiful apps easier. They did this by adding new features to Android Studio, by adding new features to Kotlin, new features for Android Jetpack, and then finally they announced that they were gonna launch Jetpack Compose in July. And they want to make it easier to build across screen. So, so now there's a lot more support for building Wear OS applications. Then some announcements for Chrome and the web. There's gonna be a lot more Chrome APIs. And the big one is the Chrome Web Vitals. So, so these are new ways that Google will track how performing your website is. So this kind of will affect SEO a lot. So that's something to keep in mind and look out for. Then with Firebase, there was a bunch of new extensions announced. Some things like Algolia search and personalization. Personalization will be able to deliver different configs to different parts of the world, depending on how they perform and stuff like that, which, which is not something that I have done before, but sounds super powerful. And then the last part, we have machine learning. Their big goal with this was to make it even easier than it is. One of the biggest parts of machine learning announced was Vertex AI. There's a new platform that can do a bunch of stuff, but one of the main things is it can train models without using data sets. All right, now for the good stuff, the Flutter part. So they released Flutter 2.2. The big focus here was performance increases. They made it even more performant and more stable than it was before. They fixed the iOS jank issue, so it's either eliminated or greatly reduces what their statement was. For the Dart language, they added Dart type aliasing. So if you have a very long, complex type, you can def make a type depth for it and make it a little easier to read. No safety is now a default whenever you create a project. Flutter Web has some optimized caching and made mouse support a lot better. Then they said there was great improvements in the way desktop worked, specifically with text fields and how they're handled. They went through the tool called Flutter Flow, which I thought was really cool, where you could build almost complete apps connected with Firebase using low code or no code solutions. I believe this tool isn't developed by Flutter themselves, but it was cool that they advertised it. Then they said that Flutter should be working pretty well on the M1 MacBooks, and then an uh, early release on Microsoft UWP, which I think is what Xbox runs off. So create Flutter apps for Xbox. And then they added a couple of memory usage tools to their Flutter dev tools. This tool should be able to help you find memory leaks a lot faster. Then they made a promise when Material U is released that Flutter will have full support for the Material U designs. And then I think the main focus for this was payments. They introduced three things for payments. First, the Google Mobile ads got improved a lot, so it's now null safe. And they added all the iOS compliance stuff and then also a new adaptive banner. Then the part I'm most hyped about is they added a Google Pay plugin. This will be able to let you use Android Pay and Apple Pay on iOS for your applications. And then there's an in-app purchases plugin that got updated as well. And the last part that was super interesting to me and something that I think I want to explore a bit is they mentioned that Dart is great for building server-side apps. They mentioned the two, two big examples was DartPad because it use, has a lot of users and has to do a lot of analysis of code and things like that. And, and the other one was pub.dev where they have to manage packages and do things like that. And both of those run on Dart. And they mentioned that Dart provides Docker images for all their releases, which I don't know much about Docker, but 
I think I'm going to be taking a look at it soon. So, all right, that was it. That was all the news that came from Google I.O. This event was packed and with software. There's so much things that you can release at something like this. So if I missed anything, make sure to leave it in the comments. But I tried my best to try to get literally everything that they announced. I also really enjoyed watching the whole keynote and creating this video. So, so if you're interested in things like this that's not only Flutter related, let me know about that in the comments as well. But that's it for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And see you next week.